You've been talked of as a leadership contender. Are you going to be? Are you going to throw your hat in the ring? And how much of Mr. McFadden's analysis do you agree with? Uh, I agree with much of what Pat said. I think there were changes that we've seen in recent years relative to the 1990s and the New Labour era, principally on two areas. I think inequality uh, was much more obvious and deepening because of economic, global economic changes that affected parts of Britain. And that spoke to communities who felt left behind by globalisation. Wage rates were depressed yeah. by immigration. That's the analysis, but, you know, the, the, the campaign just gone. You departed from the centre ground, you accept that and you shouldn't have. Is that what he's telling us? Because that's what Mr McFadden, not to put words in his mouth, that's what he's been telling us. But I think that's what the public told us. Um, I think the, the public didn't feel that they could trust us with their economic futures. They didn't feel that we spoke to their sense of cultural and national identity in England mm. and clearly in Scotland as well. And I, I now think we face this, this double bind as a Labour Party. And Pat is absolutely right. We are in a terrible hole. We are a hundred seats behind the Conservative well, Party. We should be in no doubt about but people, but people the people Mr. Hunt are going to want to know, well, what, what did you feel during the course of the campaign? You're not an empty vessel waiting to be filled up by what the electorate tell you. What was in your heart there about where Labour stood just a few days ago? Well, I was certainly shocked by the scale of the loss. I didn't see the scale of the, the loss. Right, did you think it was the right... Was it from your heart? Was it conviction that you had moved to the left with, that, with the party? Well, I, I felt that we could have had a stronger message for those aspirational parts well, uh, of, uh, of Britain. Well, you know, the Labour Party is a coalition. We all push our various uh, agendas at various points, but we have a leader, and quite rightly, we support the leader. And we, you know, and we continue to pay tribute to Ed Miliband's leadership uh, uh, during that time. But clearly, the electorate have given us a really bloody nose. They've told us they don't trust us. It didn't work. And the lessons I take from this is that we need, as Pat said, an optimistic, progressive vision of the future, which is just which is social democratic and it's just, but it also speaks to the aspirational desires of communities up and down the country. And secondly, that we're more confident about celebrating identity, whether that's English identity or Scottish or Welsh. Well, and I think, well, well, I think there are certain communities left behind by the impact of globalisation who feel under pressure and they went towards UKIP rather than coming uh, to the Labour Party. And so we have both this challenge from the Tories in terms of aspiration, but also yeah. UKIP in terms and of... That Inspiration. Let me ask yeah. you some specific questions. Maybe you would answer them. Would you keep in the next Labour Party, whatever we're going to call it, and if you get to lead the party, would you keep the, uh, the income tax rises, the non-doms, the mansion tax rises? Because people who were never going to pay those taxes still thought there must be some people who thought you are not the party of aspiration. I think the cumulative Would effect. You those I think I think the cumulative effect of many of those messages and those policies made people fearful about us being on their side. Now I'm, I'm not going to answer those questions because it's too early to go through policy well, you, you by, kind of by policy. But I think that the cumulative message of those policies was felt that actually the Labour Party wasn't on the side of people getting on and going ahead and wanting their children to do better and uh, passing down uh, the, the money towards them. So we do have to look uh, at those because as Pat said, you know, we're on the side uh, of the underprivileged, we're on the side of national health service, we're on the side of a fantastic state education system, but we're also on the side uh, of, of those families who want to shop at John Lewis and go on holiday uh, and build the extension, okay. and, and that wasn't coming through in Worcester or Southampton or Lincoln or Carlisle, uh, and that's where we lost. Uh, just that last, it sounds to me like you are going to stand. I think, every, to I, think, it. I think everybody who loves the Labour Party, as I do, needs to get involved now, and we need to hear as many voices as many politicians, as many councillors uh, to be involved in this conversation because we are in a really deep hole and we need everyone to pull together and, and really have it out about what went wrong and what went right. And I do want to be one right. of those uh, voices, but it's more than about okay. just uh, leadership. It's about how the party's led and about the political philosophy behind it. Serious question, now. I know you've been asked it before, but I mean, is your first name a problem when it comes to you know, campaigning in Scotland and I things think, like that? I, I, I think all of these issues are are superficial relative to the really big problem of just, just families in Britain feeling that the Labour Party is on their side. And we had as many policies as we like, but the message and the instinct wasn't trusted.